Oh, pleasant good morning, pleasant good morning to one and all. Welcome, welcome to this episode of uh, Speaking Out, Exposing Corruption and Competence. It's holiday um, episode. Welcome, welcome. Today, Wednesday, the 25th day of March. Today happens to be Pagwa Day. So happy Pagwa to, all, to one and all. Happy Pagwa. I hope you enjoy the holiday. I think it's holiday. I know it's holiday in Guyana. I think it's holiday in Canada as well, somebody said. So welcome, one and all. Welcome, welcome. Um, don't let me remind you to share the live, share the live and give me a thumbs up as soon as you come on. That should be um, automatic by now. You come on, you share the live and you give me a thumbs up. You know, we're here on the holiday, mo uh, Monday, the first day of the week, public holiday. This is a very short week in Guyana, short working week that is. Monday's holiday, then when we come down to the end of the week, Friday is Good Friday. And then Monday, next Monday is Easter Monday, holiday in Guyana. So lots of um, spare time. So we thought it fit to come today and to keep you updated with what is going on. We don't want too much time to elapse. So we um, decided to give up a part of our holiday to be here to share with you. And we are grateful to see so many students in the schoolyard um, this morning, holiday or no holiday, people were in the schoolyard. And of course, when we went live a few minutes ago, the people uh, on Facebook uh, joined us. So yes, welcome, share the life, share the life, share the because today's holiday. We are not teaching today, but as we indicated, we will teach today. Give us a thumbs up, share the life. And um, let's say, let's you know, we say this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Let's, let's give praise and thanks for being in the land of the living. It's a wonderful thing to be able to wake up in the morning and to see a new day. Many persons would not have been that fortunate. And uh, my colleague, Mr. Conway, is already in the studio. He's waiting, ready, rearing to go. We have so much again to tell you this morning. You know, it's amazing from one episode to the next, how many issues come up that we feel compelled to bring to your attention, to clarify and all of that. Well, we're going to be here to bring the information to you. We are committed to doing this. And as we know, you are committed to attending class. Those people who can't be on the live are on um, YouTube. They go to YouTube and they see the, the broadcast. And let me say this. Let me say this. All the episodes that we have done are on YouTube. All, all the episodes are there. So if you miss any, you can always go on YouTube. And the, the numbers on YouTube will reflect, you know. We will see sometime overnight. This last program we did there on Thursday, that special program. Fantastic um, representation. Fant people have turned out in large numbers to watch. Thousands and thousands of persons have watched that in the past two or three days, according to um, YouTube. So share the live, and we are going to come here, we're going to give you the information um, as it comes to hand. You know, a lot of these things, people tend to whitewash, they tend to sweep under the carpet. We are going to bring it to you, and as we say, we do we research, and we bring the facts to you. We bring facts, and we challenge anyone, all of those people, we challenge them to dispute anything that we have said. We challenge them. We challenge them, because we know what we are talking about. We are experienced former police officers, and we know how the system uh, works. And as we have said before, we choose this, what some people might consider an orthodox method to bring information to members of the force and members of the public. Because we, that Mr. myself and Mr. Connery, we are now personal and grata in the Guyana Police Force. Previously, we would have been invited to do a lot of presentations to teach, because we have considerable knowledge in policing. And um, we would have been invited to teach at all levels, including very, very senior levels. But now they're not doing that. But we know that they listen, you know. We know despite the fact that they are not going to invite us, we have taken the opportunity to come on this live and to share information with you. Because we continue to say that the information we acquired over the years, in most, most of the information, most of the knowledge we get, is because of the police. We, we were sent on courses abroad, local courses, and therefore we feel obliged to share some of the knowledge that we have acquired over the years. So yeah, we're going to do the roll call in a short while, and then we're going to move straight into um, today's program. 
straight into this. We're still waiting on you to share um, the live. We're still waiting on you to give me a thumbs up. I haven't gotten enough thumbs up. And when we say thumbs up, we're not talking about in the chat. I want to talk about the thumbs up on the program itself. Hit the thumbs up, hit those emojis, and let us know that we are appreciating. So for the, the um, we scheduled the program just before 8 o'clock this morning. And the first person to be um, in class was uh, Kenneth. Kenneth was the first man from Maryland. Welcome. Congratulations, Kenneth. And he was followed by Sean. And then Carlton, my squad mate, came in. Um, Sean is from New York. Carlton, too, is from New York. And then we have uh, Lyndon. He's from New Amsterdam. Any in the house? Any in New Amsterdam in the house? Debbie came in next. And Debbie says she's from Providence on the East Bank of Demerara. Lucius is was next. Pamela all she's from Pamela is from the west side. She is from the west side. Welcome. Then Raul came in, uh, followed by the man from Texas, Everett. He came in. Der, uh, Derek was next. Then we had the man from the UK, regular from the UK. Wayne came in. Then Colin is here. Winston from the UK as well is in the house. Tessa from Orlando. Tessa, when I said Tessa, I want to know if I dread. If it is a dread, Tessa, hi. Tessa, hi. Dread. Um, then we have Jakey is here. Uh, Patricia G. Uh, Patricia, happy birthday, my dear. Happy, happy birthday to you. Patricia G is a, a dedicated student is celebrating our natal day today. Happy birthday to you. Then the one and only Rohan is here. From um, he say he's from he's telling us that spring has started, spring has sprung. Anthony um is here. Brian is in the house. Winston is very much here from California. Courtney is here as well. Etha is in the house. Then we have Melville, Terence nine seven nine five from um, Canada. Courtney. Then we have Gail. Ulrich. Ulrich. Uh, happy birthday to you too, my brother. I know today is your day. Don't believe it, I forget. I don't miss these things, you know. So happy birthday to Ulrich as well. Ulrich is celebrating his birthday to do so. Two of the loyal students, uh, Patricia and Ulrich, are celebrating the birthdays uh, today. Happy birthday to you, uh, folks. Emerson from Manhattan, Midtown is here. Vibart is very much in the house. Uh, Vibart is um, Mr. Conway Squarry, 1966 Lawson. Anthony Jarvis is here. Or came in. Then we have uh, Orin, 12758. Corin is here. Uh, my squad mate, 9556. Taylor is here. Then we have Wayne. Jean um, is in the house. She said she's ready for the credible information. Tilula is very much here. He's from the Big Apple. The Big Apple. Family music. And then we have Paul Archer. Paul, I, 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 I was um, pleasantly surprised to see Australia winning the Palmer. For those of you who don't know, the Palmer is the um, long range shooting uh, supremacy in the world. So over the weekend, uh, the, the competition was in South Africa, Australia edged um, England. So Australia are the champions, long range. When we say long range, we talk about 700, 800, 900, and 1,000 meters. That is the ranges over which they shoot. 700, 800, 900, and a thousand uh, meters. Then we have Joseph here. Joseph said, uh, all the way from Texas. Evelyn, Pauline, uh, Denise from Florida is here. Fergus, then Cecile came in. Nigel is here with us. Bart, Bart is in the house. Then we have uh, Morton. I can't recall seeing Morton before. Welcome if you are a you might have been on the program, but maybe the first time you're commenting. So welcome, my brother. Glendis is here. Rastaman. Then we have George um, from BV. Doreen, my squad mate from Canada. Sandra is in the house as well. Then we have Sandrine. I can't recall seeing Sandrine before. Welcome. Cranston is here. Clive is out of the UK. He's here. Uh, Ezzy is here. Malva. Five is in the house. Karen, my squad mate, 9555 Steven. He says he's not feeling too well. But welcome, my brother, and hope you feel better soon. Then Lynette from the UK came in next. Philip, Anthony from Petersall and the East Bank. 
Felicia is here. John came in after. Marcia. Marcia. Yeah. Then we have Pito from Queens. Then we have Una Desri uh, came in from Georgia. Uh, Queenie. Welcome, Queenie. And Queenie, thanks for the contribution. No, we don't ask for contributions in the program, but we do appreciate when people decided out of their own goodwill to give us a little top up. So thank you very much, my dear. Colin from New Jersey is here. Terence from Calif uh, California, 9135 from California. Desri is in the house. She's from Texas, she says. Malcolm. Then we have uh, Malcolm is from Queens. Barbara is very much here. Joan. Then we have Trevor. Um, then ooh, Roger. I know Roger. Well, Roger's a countryman of mine. Then we have Gordon from Canada, 6659. Old police is here. Then who we have? We have Colin. The other Colin Adams this time. Uh, Deborah is in the house. Orville. Uh, Denise. Uh, Daniel. Claude. Tamo. Boxerman is here. Then we have Roderick. I can't recall seeing Roderick before. Welcome. Um, then we have John. Clay. Francis. Francis, I was wondering if you're going to miss class today. Francis Keith from Melanie Damashana. Then we have Anne. Troy, Princess, Isabella, not a regular, Colleen, Brenda, Sheila, my squad mate, Clarence, Denise, Maxwell, 11704, Beaton is here, Orin from the UK, and the last person in the schoolyard was Samuel from Toronto. He's in the house. And when we went live, the first person in was um, Rawl, then Carl Carlton. Then we have Joan. Those are the people on um, Facebook that come in for us. Lynette from Barbados is here. Then we have Winston. And the list goes on and on and on. And I, I normally do this, apart from the roll call, to recognize those who are here, to let people know that when we say we have so many persons in the schoolyard waiting, we're not bluffing anyone. You see the timings, and we're not bluffing anyone. Uh, let me bring in my, uh, well, I'm going to do some announcements, and then I'm going to bring in uh, Mr. Conway. Let me do some announcements first, and then I'm going to bring in Mr. Conway. Now, they, 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 um, now, let me remind us that we had the death of Sergeant Vaughn, Police Sergeant Vaughn, that said that he was killed in by an accidental discharge from a colleague. He was on a, according to the, the, the crime chief, let me read what he said, Vaughn was one of the officers from a specialized joint services unit until this um, prisoner who had escaped from the Mazaruni prison. prison. So he, was, he said he was on a specialized unit. And he was, according to the police, accidentally shot. So I understand he was shot three times. So I don't know what weapon up to now. They're not saying what firearm was used. But one of the things, this is almost two weeks now since this incident occurred. Two weeks. And they, they claimed initially, they told us, that a rank, a constable was under close arrest for the killing of Sergeant Vaughan. And up to now, I have not heard anything else. So I don't know if this man is still under close arrest. I don't know if this man is charged. I know the post-mortem examination was done um, some time ago. And the cause of death has been given. So I don't know what is delaying. At least, at least, and this is the problem we have when it comes to credibility and the cooperate communication unit. And I refer to them as the propaganda unit. They don't update the public. You came out with an initial release as to what transpires, an investigation you said was launched. You have a duty and a responsibility to keep the public updated with what is going on. That is how you are going to be deemed credible. But now when you issue this initial release with a fancy story, and you fail to say at the beginning of the story, Marilla, Marilla, Marie, because they're telling us that this giant services unit Heavily armed, as we showed the picture on Thursday, chasing this um, man. People, the policemen were armed with what looked like AR-type rifles. Um, I saw uh, kind of um, AK-47, and they're saying that the escapee, when he saw the Giant Services group, he attacked them with a cutlass, and he was fatally shot. That is what they said. But up to now, no further information on this matter. Two weeks, policeman, police sergeant killed. Two weeks. Rank arrested, close arrest, they say. Even though we said you can't be under close arrest for crime. The law, chapter 1701, spells out clearly the offenses for which a rank can be placed under close arrest. And certainly, it's not um, a, 
um, homicide. And, and nothing else, we have more, nothing else. So let me hope they tell us something. And I guess the families are, the families is still waiting to hear more information. Then we have the, um, you know, over the, we can displace this country is a fire country, you know. Every other day, every couple of days, some fire. I learned of the a fire in my own village, better for working on the east coast of Demerara in Guyana, where 84 year old Moses Elias, former head teacher, was um, he died in the fire. And according to the fire service, the fire was deliberately set. So it's a murder we're talking about. Man died in the fire. Early morning fire at uh, Latuan, better for working on the east coast of Demerara. An 84 year old uh, former head teacher, uh, Moses Elias, was killed. And only this morning, this morning, fire in Linden about two o'clock this morning at a Chinese restaurant. Um, let me say the, the fire, um, early morning fire, the place named Red Bull Chinese Restaurant Linden. Red Red Bud, sorry, B U D Red Bud Chinese Restaurant Linden. The early this morning, and one of the uh, workers there is said to have died in the fire. That's about two o'clock uh, this morning. So fire and fire and more fire. Fire all the time, and people are dying. So again, again, I got to say, I don't know, the minister of my face, Robson Ben, your department, prison, people getting away. Fire, people dying in fire. Police, well, the issues about the police are so numerous. We're going to talk about one um, a little later as we go on. As I said in the notification, we're going to talk about that um, revocation letter and the, the redrawal of the letter. We'll analyze it on the program this morning. So in terms of announcement too, um, we're going to go into the depth because when we were here, we spoke about the depth of this, uh, you know, the, the young lady, the security uh, guard, when they were the AR-40, AR-15 rifle, or we said AR-15 style rifle, killed the young woman. Then he went, that is a, that is a story for Hollywood, you know. Then he went and he shot himself. Again, no update because they say he was critical in the hospital. Uh, no update on what has happened so far. And one of the things that struck me, he was critical in the hospital under police guard. So I don't know if they expect a critical man will be uh, will get away or if somebody going to go and take him out. So he was under uh, police guard. And, you know, um, the, 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 the thing, follow, shortly following that, we're going to talk about it a little later. Um, Andy Mann, shot and killed by a security. We are going to talk about that too. That is at Luziknan sometime um, last week. So security companies, man can afford, man can go get a AR rifle and kill people. And this one with a shotgun, somehow the shotgun went off and killed this 19 year old Andy man who, who, who was nearby. And then we have this tragic incident um, in Russia where 137 people so far have died they had some concert, and they said four heavily armed men stand the concert and open indiscriminate fire. Um, up to this morning, when I checked, 137 died, including three children, and they said 180 were uh, still in hospital. So madness, madness. Then, um, well, for the for the um, for the better for for news that are more pleasant. Let me. I already indicated. Um, Bordé greetings to Ulrich, Bordé greetings to uh, Patricia, and we have also retired Inspector Jeffrey Lane. He's celebrating a Bordé today. So we have two celebrants today. I want to wish you all the best on this, your natal day. Enjoy the day, and I hope that you live to see many, many, many more uh, Bordés. And then we have some belated Bordé greetings, quite a few. Um, the force is to retired Superintendent Terence Ralph. Ralph number was 6890. I remember Terence very, very well. When I when in 1993, I was transferred to the uh, West Demerara D Division. In those days, it was D Division. I, I went there, I met Terence. I was a superintendent and then Terence was a ASP, a deputy superintendent. And shortly after, I took over that division from um, Assistant Commissioner Bombry. And I can tell you, people like Terence and um, Mingo, uh, Mingo uh, Felix, Mar 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 Marvin, I think it was his first name. Those guys actually guided me as a new commander. Guided me, Terrence. So I'm, a, I'm forever grateful to people like Ter Terrence. And the thing is, it wasn't about rank. I was a superintendent. Yeah, I outranked them. But they had more experience and knowledge in, in policing than me. 
and therefore I was prepared to listen to them and, and, and be guided by their advice. I think those, that don't happen now. So Terence is celebrating a birthday today. The man from uh, Noise to send message to Lima Papa, Delta Papa. You want Risky to send some Lima. I remember that well, Terence, for so those people who are listening. You know what I'm talking about. Then we have ex-woman, the Fifth Fre Fre Council celebrated a birthday recently. Wendy King, my squaddy, W364, she celebrated a birthday recently. I also had a next uh, female squad mate, uh, Doreen Sanders. She also celebrated a birthday recently. Um, Doreen, uh, Doreen was 328, W328. And then a very good friend of mine, he's on this program commenting from time to time. I don't know if he's here, not today, but he recently celebrated a birthday too. They are talking about the only, the one and only Derek Rodney, 8516, Teach Rodney. Derek, I, I, I'm going to talk your story today. Since you celebrated that birthday recently, I'm going to um, joke you today. Well, happy birthday, my brother. Happy birthday. Who else? We had, um, and, and Derek, when he retired, when he resigned from the force, I don't think he reached his retirement. He was a very senior officer of the National Insurance Scheme. They're very, very senior and experienced man at the NIS. Derek. Then we have um, well, a, a wonderful gentleman celebrated his 98, 98th birthday not so long ago. We're talking about Mr. James Brown, our old James Brown. His number was 5436. James Brown celebrated his 98th birthday uh, recently. Uh, uh, Martin Vargas was on March the 23rd. He celebrated his 98th birthday. And you know, every time you meet Mr. Brown, he's always uh, um, has a good word uh, for you. Always, always, always. And it, 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 I'm told that in his younger days, he was a top athlete. He was a top athlete in his younger days. And he became famous, they say, in, in 1970. When, he, as a young detective counsel, he gave chase an apprehended wanted man, Ari Biari. Ari Biari was wanted for the murder of several youths. And um, Brown caught him. Brown chased him and caught him. And then everybody got to know who James Brown was. So I want to wish all those persons who are celebrating today and who celebrated recently um, happy, happy birthday to you guys. Let me bring in Mr. Conway, and then we're going to move on. Mr. Good morning. Morning. H happy to be in the land of the living to do God's work. And birthday greetings in order. Ulrich, Patricio, James Brown. I remember him. Uh, I last met him, I think it was in December, the ex police, the police association luncheon. We had a nice little little gaff, and he looked like, a, like he was in, in his 50s, man. Nice conversation. And like you, Paul, I, I'm, I'm still I'm concerned about the shooting of Vaughn, and we're not hearing anything about it it's just two things should happen either here somebody recommended to be charged for for, for, for his debt or or they the hear that the inquest is recommended and an inquest is really and we do an inquiry to decide whether or not any person is responsible for his debt simple as that either you charge somebody or an inquest not, nothing more to be done you know they open them themselves for a lot of conspiracy theory because we're hearing all sorts of things. I won't mention some of the things that we've been hearing, but unless the more the delay is more conspiracy theory will develop and more they will be exposed. Yeah, indeed, it's important that they give information. Um, and they're not doing that, they're not learning, they're not learning, they're not listening, and they're not learning. Now, I am um, I understand there that um Derek was a general manager at NIS. Some one of the students is saying Derek was a general manager at the um, National Insurance Scheme. Now, let me let me say this. On the last program, I think the last program we spoke about this um, man for whom the Interpol had issued a wanted uh, a red notice. He was arrested in Guyana at Palm Court, they did place it, and he is charged and he's before the court in Guyana and they're talking about the extradition. But the they, 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 um, I think it has been carried. We might have said so too that he was staying at the Duke Lodge. Now, we want if we did say that, we want to correct that. Um, the information is he was staying at 93 Duke Street. 
Duke Lodge is located at 94 and 95 Duke Street. So based on the recent information, he was not staying at Duke Lodge. You know, Duke Lodge is owned by the National Security Advisor, uh, Mr. Gerald Govai. And if um, people have said that, we might have said it too, I'm not sure. But just want to clarify that um, this man lived at 93 um, Duke Street, opposite the U.S. Embassy. And therefore, he was neighbor to Duke Lodge and he wasn't residing at Duke Lodge. So if we did say that, we want to take this opportunity to apologize to um, Jerry and those persons who are associated with Duke Lodge. Um, the address, again, I say to our students, that this man, according to what the newspaper said, he resided at 93 Duke Street. That is next to Duke Lodge. Duke Lodge's address is 94 and 95 Duke Street. Both are opposite the U.S. Embassy. So let me make that um, apology. Let me make that correction before we move on. I know we want to bring you credible and valid information. Yes, yeah, sometimes you might slip up. But once we discover that we slipped up, we are going to come back and be man enough to tell you, say, hey, we might have made a mistake. This is what it is. I'm sure Mr. Conway will want to comment on that too. So let me bring him in. CC? I, I agree with you, you know. And when we make mistakes and so, we normally open up our chest, you know, and they say, me a call for me a call for. Yes, we, we got, yes, um, you, you know, clarify, which is the correct address that he is, that he is, he was residing and we wish to apologize. All right, thanks for that. Now, today, well, not today, yesterday, the 24th of March, was a significant day for myself, Mr. Conway, and other former members of the Police Service Commission. Yesterday was one year, one year, since Justice Gino Passat and they done that landmark decision where he found that the president, President Irfan Ali, um, violated the constitution of the Cooperative Republic of Ghana when on the 16th of June, 2021, he suspended um, us as members of the Police Service Commission. And again, being in the teaching mood, mood or mode, being in the teaching mode, we can't assume that everyone knows um, what actually transpired. So we will quickly do a recap. I'll let you know. Uh, uh, you know when we talk, they talk about evidence, they talk about transparency. All these other words, they bandy around. Um, no. But we're going to walk you through exactly uh, what happened, which, what led to the suspension of the Police Service Commission by the President in June 2021 and the ruling of Justice Passad on the 24th of March 2023, which says that the President violated, the, the, he acted unconstitutionally, violated the Constitution. Now, let me start from the beginning. You will recall that on the 2nd of August 2020, the President was sworn in. He, the vice president, I think the attorney general, they were sworn into office. In other words, the new government, this PPP government, came into effect on the 2nd of August um, 2020. Immediately thereafter, immediately, when I say immediately, even the same day, the same day, uh, um, people were instructed to put people in certain positions. There were police officers to put persons in certain positions. Thomas, who now has the presidential guard at the time, he was on pre-retirement leave in August. I think he was to retire from the 4th of November. He was called out. Instructions were given for him to be called out. He was called out and made to head the presidential guard. Several transfers took place. Man was sent to in being in charge of Soku. Um, the man had admin and many, the crime chief, they were all, all immediately following the return to the, up to the PVP. These people were put into these positions. The problem was that they put them in these positions, but they could not promote them. The Constitution says that the power to promote rests with the Police Service Commission, of which I was the chairman. So they put these people into position, and then they wanted them promoted. Now, on the 16th of September, I'm going to walk you through, walk you through. On the 16th of September, I had a meeting with President Ali at the office of the President in Shift Chandapal Drive. It was the afternoon of the 16th of September. This meeting was arranged by an outside person. This is not the secretary or somebody associated with the president called me uh, for this meeting. It was arranged by an outside person who is not a police, who is not a member of government. Uh, that he was the intermediary. 
I went to the meeting. The president, um, we explain, exchange pleasantries. President soap, sweet, um, soap me up, bottom me up, tell me how I did a go. How, uh, he was very impressed with the type of job I'm doing. He went all the way back to 1992, election day, when I was office in charge of the TSU, I had to go out on the streets with the right unit and, brought, and bring order into the streets of Georgia. He told me all of that, very complimentary. He even told me that he would want me to remain as chief of the police service commission and all of that. Then he showed the thing out our promotion. Then he showed out the promotion. He talked about Brutus promotion. He talked about Karen Bash promotion. He talked about um, this by Mark Forsen. He talked about all of these people, promotion. And I told him that, look, one of the reasons why some people are not being promoted is because they might have this many matters. I told him what the rules were. It's in some cases, they might not have passed the appropriate qualifying exam. And I explained to him the system. And after a while, we let uh, the, the conversation end. It was a very, um, it was uncomfortable, I must say, because he was talking about people and promotion, talk about Paul Williams, he talked about uh, Philip Azul being unprofessional, talk about these things. And I counter every single um, name that he raised and the allegation he made. Because in the case of Paul Williams, he told me, uh, I'm not going to put it this way, when I told him, that um, Karim Marsh and Brutus had pending disciplinary matters, matters they have been under investigation. He told me that Paul Williams has been investigated. Too. So I told him, I don't know about that. But I said, well, in any event, if Williams has been investigated, then the thing is to do is to make sure we got to ensure all these investigations are completed uh, before these people can be considered for promotion. Well, that wasn't Williams, because Williams is already a deputy commissioner. And he did not fall under the uh, ambit of the police uh, service commission. Anyhow, that meeting ended. That meeting ended, and I went away. The very next day, the seventeenth, I got a call from the businessman in Regent Street, Arafat Kalanda, calling the name. Let us sue me and came into court. They, he wanted me to meet at a place in. He wanted us to meet at a place in Middle Street. Um, I wasn't certain certain what the place was, but I get direction. It's a place on the southern side in Middle Street, uh, very close to Main Street, a little. Um, place they have there. So we meet, and, 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 and then coincidentally, we arrive about the same time. So we went in there, we had a little talk. I, at that time, I, I referred to, I, I considered Kuala a friend because we were in the Rife Association executive together. I knew his father, and I considered him a friend. So that's the reason why I responded to the invitation. After the little chit chat, he told me that the purpose of the meeting is that um, the Attorney General, Anil Landalal, wanted to meet with me, but he was afraid to approach me directly. And he asked me if I would meet with the Attorney General. I said, of course, as the Chairman of the Police Service Commission, I will meet with anyone. But I set out my um, grounds immediately. I said, no one is going to get me to do anything unlawful, illegal, or immoral. Let me understand this. Right? And then shortly after, he asked about meeting with the vice, um, the now vice president, which is vice president, then Barajak. And I repeated, I said, I will meet with anyone as chairman of the police service commission, but they're not going to get me to do anything that is immoral, illegal, unconstitutional. And we had the talk and we, 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 we finished there. The next day, or perhaps the same day, I can't remember, I have it written down somewhere. Colin called me back to tell me, man, he was laughing. It was a very, um, tell me, man, he didn't realize that he met with the big man. I understood, I stood him to mean that the meeting I had the previous day with the president. I told him, yes, I said, well, but I thought you knew. So that is why he did not mention it. That is what I told him. And you know, we laugh it off and we left at that. And the thing went on then, the next in, in engagement was that um, shortly thereafter, the police service commission received a letter from the same Edgar Thomas, who is the editor of the presidential guard, recommended a whole set of people for acting appointments. And this thing was so irregular because the other the presidential guy cannot write to the police service commission of a promotion. Police, anything to do with the police service commission and the police has to come to the commission of police. So we met at the, the, the police service commission and we were upset over the fact that Thomas wrote to the police service commission directly. It was breach of all the, the, the protocol. And I was um, mandated to, to rebuke him in writing, which I did. I wrote a strong letter to him rebuking him. Say, look, you have not to be doing this, right? And I outlined to him what the procedure is. The very day when I reached home at my residence in BV, I got a call on my cell phone from the president himself. It's not a secretary call and said, old for the president. President himself called. 
right? As a matter of fact, I did not even realize I had the number of the president in my um, cell phone. So the name showed up. And then I answered, and it was the president. And he said he was calling me in relation to the letter that I wrote to Thomas, right? And then he told me that I should go easy on Thomas because he is the one who instructed Thomas to write to the police service commission about promotion of these ramps. And I told him, I said, if, if that were so, Thomas as a senior police officer ought to know, he ought to advise you that he can write to the police service commission. He ought, to, he ought to advise you. And I told him, I said, not well served when a senior police officer is going to um, not advise you what the correct thing is. And then he ended at that. It ended at that. The next significant date, I'm walking through it step by step, student. Next significant date was on the 17th of December. But let me let me just say this. Following the meeting, uh, even before the meeting with the president, the police service commission, we had instructed the secretary to write to the police uh, administration for them to make recommendations for promotions, which we anticipated would have been made on the 31st day of December. The tradition, new earliest day is traditionally a day when you get the big boss, as they would call it, would come out. So we had instructed. Now, I, I discovered afterward at the meeting that the secretary did not um, write to the um, police force administration at that time. She wrote after the meeting with the president. So I was a little upset because it created the impression that we were writing because of this meeting I had with the president, which was not the case. We had instructed to write before. One of these administrative um, problems, and it went after. Right? So we had sent out the letter to them. Because we had intended to meet sometime in December to consider promotion. On the 17th of December 20, um, on the 17th of December 2020, 17th of December, several officers, um, Shif Posad Bacchus, Ravindra, Shif Posad Bacchus is the man who is in charge of Region 6 at New Amsterdam. Ravindra Stanley, who is the Stu I see. Um, you had um, and a few hours, Shavon Jupiter. I don't know where she is now. Prem Narain. You had the man at West Esukibo Coast, Region 3. Uh, Shif, um, Kemra Shif Baran. They all, through their attorney, um, Satram, KV, uh, KV Satram, wrote to the Police Service Commission to say that, well, basically well, this is what I said. They, they all had pending disciplinary matters before the commission. And to say, they were saying that they knew that the Police Service Commission was going to be meeting to consider promotion. And they were saying that they, we should make sure that their matters were completed before any such meeting is held so that they can be considered for promotion. And in the same letter, each of the letters, they went on to threaten. Remember, these were individual letters. They went on to threaten that should the police um, not conclude their matter and go ahead with promotion, they are going to move to the high court to nullify the promotions. That is what they did. This is on the 17th of December 2020, even before the police commission, service commission sat to discuss um, promotions. Even before. I can't recall what the response would have been, but we brought it to the attention of our, our in-house attorney and um, the matter was dealt with. On the 23rd of December, 2020, the Police Service Commission met to, to create a short list of forces who had to be further considered for promotion. That was an old day exercise. We sat down, we reviewed the files, we created a short list, right? A short list, mind you. Decision had not been made. This is a short list that you have to now go and check the records, check see the past the exam, make sure you don't have pending disciplinary matters and all of those type of things. So we created a short list with the intention that over the um, over the next week, we were going to finalize that list. The very night of the 23rd of December 2020, and you know what, I'm referring to no notes and all of these things here, you know, have them in air because it is the truth, right? The very night when I got home, I, I received a call that I should make contact with the president. I was reluctant to do so because I figured out the fact that the um, service commission met on the 23rd during the same day, and the, I, I regards to the meeting I had with the president of 16th of September, I said this man was the one to ask something about promotion. So I said, look, I am calling him. That's what I told myself, I ain't gonna call him. But then uh, the, the, the person who was calling called back and said, look, man, I'm all waiting on you and so on. I know, as I've said repeatedly, this discipline can be a bad thing. Because I'm a disciplined person, I did not want to refuse to um, call the president. So I reluctantly 
um, went to a quiet place in my home and I called the president on my cell phone. I called him on my cell phone to his cell phone. Told me that he was coming back from a meeting on the East Coast and we had a little brief, brief chit chat. Told me that. Then he moved straight to the thing and asked about promotion, the specific main. He asked about Karimbash, he asked about Brutus. I told him, I said, well, as I indicated to you previously, these people have pending disciplinary matters. I told him, I said, Mr. President, in the case of Karimbash, Karimbash has a matter that he took the police service commission before the court because um, disciplinary uh, proceedings were initiated against him and he challenged it. He went to the court. The matter is, the matter is still pending before the high court. So how can we consider him for promotion this time. The man fly off and handle how long this matter can be pending. And he weighs in his voice and he ranting and he thinks I'll try to explain to him. He's not listening. I told him the rules. I explained again to him the rules. People with pending disciplinary matters cannot be considered for promotion until the matter the matters are, are, are concluded. All right, so done. No matter that, that call ended abruptly. The very next day, the 24th of December 2020. Follow me here carefully. Very next day, Minister of Roman Service, Robson Ben, communicated to the person who was carrying out the duties of the Commissioner, Nigel Oppie, that he wanted several officers charged with several offenses. Listen to this. Next day, after the night with the um, call from the President on the 23rd, the next day, Robson Ben, the Minister of Affairs, communicated to Oppie. He wanted people charged. Among the, those persons charged, were several persons who were shortlisted for promotion, including the late Edmund Cooper, um, Azor, and, and several other persons. And when they sent the list to the Police Service Commission, I have a copy, to the list, all the matters that they were talking about were matters related to election thing. For example, in the case of um, Cooper, they said he should be charged for their election of duty because he was the commander of Region 5, when they had the demonstration, the road with the Henry boys killing, and they felt that he did not do enough to quell that um, disturbance. In the case of Azor, listen to this carefully, they said, among other things, that Azor assaulted uh, diplomats, assaulted diplomats at the Ashman building in Atfield Street, which was the, I think, continent headquarters for the um, Region 4 June election. He, said, he assaulted. They accused ranks at the immigration department of trafficking in person, as a whole set of things are did. And it was clear that they were doing that to prevent these persons from being promoted. That is what they were doing. And let me make this point. That was on the 24th of December, 2020. Until today, until today, today is the 25th day of March, 2024. Nothing else has happened. That is what they wanted to do. Well, when we met with, at the commission, we saw through that. We saw through that. And we said, look, we are not gonna, we're going to ignore that letter. We're going to ignore that because by then they had sent it to the Police Service Commission. And there was a lot of irregularity because the person who sent it to the Police Commission in his own um, right, in his own right, was Brutus, senior superintendent at the time, Brutus, the admin man. And that was highly irregular because he can't write directly to the Police Service Commission. The police of the person who's to write to the police service commission, a constitutional body, is the commissioner, the person who cannot the function of commissioner. And even if the admin man is to write, he has to write on behalf of the commissioner. So we, we discussed it and we ignored it. And we continued with the shortlist. And then on the 34th, I think it might have been the 30th, I'm not sure. We were finalizing the list. They are the last part of finalizing the list when we got word from the um, commission's lawyer that the matter, Brutus, and these people, uh, he was joined. He, the matter was filed by Brutus to challenge this promotion that was not made, mind you, not made, to challenge it. He was joined by um, Stanley, Shepusad, Bacchus, Prem Narain, uh, and I said, Shavan Jupiter, they joined him. And the Chief Justice um, issued an order for the status quo in the force to remain. That is what they said. So when the lawyer came, and told us that. We asked, what does that mean? Because she didn't use the word injunction. She said status quo. So we said, what does that mean? She said, well, it means that no promotion can be made until the chief justice determines this matter. So we said, all right, fine. So we aborted the process as law-abiding people have been made. Right? So that is what stopped the promotion from being made on the 
31st of December, 2020. Then um, the matter came up before the Chief Justice in January, 2021. The Attorney General appeared and the Attorney General told the and Attorney General Anil Nandlal, and he told the Chief Justice that he wants some time to speak to the parties. In other words, he wanted to speak to the ranks who challenged the service commission uh, and the commission to resolve the matter. That is what he said, to come to some compromise on the, the, with this matter. All right, so an adjournment was granted. We had two meetings. I remember I attended both meetings virtually because I was half, halfway around the world. And I maintain that, look, we were not going to be um, blackmailed into promoting people. People took us to court. And it's not going to work like that. And I made it clear that if you want any meaningful discussion, the matter before the court should be redrawn, and then we can sit and um, discuss. No, the America will say the nice, and they didn't want that. By the time we met the second time, some of the ranks who were named on this thing by Europe's men had Mr. Todd, Mr. Dexter Todd, representing their interests in this matter. So that did not go any place. So the matter proceeded in court um, to be ventilated in court. This is in January, February, I'm talking about where the Attorney General wanted to um, add some time to speak to the parties, January, February, 2021. All right. The next significant thing then is that in May, May, the Chief Justice was set to um, pres um, preside over the matter sometime around the 20th, or I can't remember the exact date, not, not the 20th, sometime in that last week, around the last week in May 2021. On the 19th of May 2021, Mr. Conway, who is my uh, colleague on this program, Mr. Whitaker, Mr. George Fraser, and Mr. Mark Gilbert. We were all part of a team that the commissioner, Mr. Leslie James, asked to review the police force standing order. So on the 19th of May, 2021, Conway and the others were arrested because they claimed that um, we were paid, we were given us the, the money that we received for reviewing the standing order amounted to fraud, $10,056,000 among the five of us. If they say it amounted to fraud, they were arrested. And to say, when we were invited to do this review, we agreed, nothing about money was mentioned, but later um, they came and told us, Andrews Jr. was the man in charge of the uh, special project unit, came to tell us that the police force had, been, had made a decision that we were going to be given a stipend for the days that we reviewed the standing order. We had agreed on two days a week. Two days a week, and we were going to give, be given a stipend for those uh, two days. And we agreed. So they were arrested. I was to be arrested the same day. Let me tell you this. Same 19th of May. Soku, headed by um, Krishnat Ramana, they traveled to Cherry Jagan International Airport because I was expected to arrive in Guyana at that time. At that time. I had finished working somewhere in the Caribbean, and I had gone to the U.S. to spend a few days with my family, then to come to Guyana. They turned up on the 19th of May to arrest me when I arrived in Guyana. Well, I get more contact than them, so I did not arrive. I did not arrive on that day. The night of the 19th of May, 2021, a reporter, a female reporter, called me to tell, find out, um, she said, basically, I did not arrive this day when I was going to arrive. And I did what I was trained to do. I threw out the feeler. And I said, well, look, I'm making an arrangement to arrive the next day. And the very night on social media, it was stated that Slow did not arrive on the 19th, but he was making arrangements to arrive. And I, I only spoke to one person about that. One person. But I did not arrive then. I did not bother to come then. And another significant thing, let me tell you all about this conspiracy they're talking about. The 19th of May is when Conway was arrested and the Prime Minister, Mark Phillips, wrote to me and Conway the same 19th of May, 2021. What they call a show cause letter. For us to show cause why you should not advise the president to have us removed or are suspended from the Police Service Commission because of this charge that was filed against us. Listen to this carefully. This charge filed on the afternoon of the 19th of May, 2021. 
and the prime minister was so efficient that on the very day, the 19th of May, 2021, he can write to us, Mr. Conway and myself, for us to show cause why we should not, he should not advise the president to have us suspended from the police service commission. I say that that was a conspiracy. And that was even before the persons appeared, the persons who were in Guyana appeared in court. Because they appeared in court on the 20th of May, the following day. They appeared in court the next, the following day. And then we got a second show cause letter from the same prime minister. This time, well, the, 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 as again, as I've said, the first show cause letter was as a result of, was to me a Conway because we were charged with conspiracy to commit fraud. The second show cause letter was to all the members of the Police Service Commission because they say then that we are joined with Member of Parliament, Ganesh Maipal, to challenge the constitutionality of the Fiscal Management and Accountability Act. We did. But we were not the only commission to have joined the Ganesh Maipal. The Public Service, the Teaching Service, they joined too. But they never asked them to show cause. They asked, they were targeting me and the Police Service Commission to show cause. And of course, we responded. We responded in the first response. We, we retained attorney at law, Mr. Selwyn Peters from Canada to represent the commission. And then later on, he was joined by Mr. Dexter Todd and Mr. Dexter Smart. Excellent lawyers, and they did a fantastic job. Fantastic job. And what happened? The matter went through the, 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 the thing. So I turned up, you recall, I eventually turned up on the 15th of October, 2021 to answer the charge. Having received a summons from Krishnath Ramana, assistant superintendent from Soku, he left it with the lawyer, Nigel Hughes, who represented me, and the center said, you're required to come. I said, I'm going to come. I'm not running. I was working before that, and I will be. I will not be working, so I will travel. I travel in to Guyana on the 13th of October, 2021, and I knew that the Soko people were tracking me Again, training. I get a little training. So they weren't able to apprehend me on the 13th when I arrived. The closest they came was at the bank. When I left the bank, they ran into the bank. I had already left. So they turned up in the court compound on the 15th. So when I appeared on the 15th of October to go to court, Ramana, Duke, um, Winston Singh, and um, another cop, they are there. And they are arresting me. When I asked what conspiracy to commit fraud, the same matter that I'm appearing in court for, the same matter that Ramana summoned me to take court, they're in the court compound to arrest me for the same matter. I refused, I resisted, I well, not resisted, I refused. I was right, I would have been in my right to resist because they had no lawful um, authority to do so. So I told them, no, no, you can't arrest me for that. I'm already charged. And, and, and you won't believe this, Ramana. They, he was the lead invest, one of the lead investigators of Soku. He then told me that they were arresting me to read the caution after charge to me. Can you imagine that? Caution after charge in the court compound when you're already charged and before the court. So I had to tell them, I said, you're going to be crazy. Caution after charge is not read when the matter is already filed in court and the defendant is before the court. Caution after charge is read at the police station when you inform the person that they are charged. Then immediately you tell them, um, you, you caution them. Not when months after the person before the court. And they, they, Mr. Peters intervened, Mr. Patrice Henry intervened in the court compound. And then I went and I um, answered to the charge. That was the first time on the 15th of October, 2021, I realized that there were other charges against me as well. Nobody had ever communicated that to me. They summoned me for the conspiracy to commit fraud which I turned up. The first time I learned is when the magistrate started to read this um, sexual assault charges uh, to me. So, all right, I was put on bail on those charges. And I left the same day. I filed a complaint against, a, a cybercrime complaint against Anil Nanlal Attorney General. Because on the 29th of, um, on the 29th of June, he made some statements on his program on NCN. Now, let me go back to the 28th. So we're saying that this matter, that this is a brutal matter before the Chief Justice. The Chief Justice was due to issue the, the um, decision on the 18th of June, 2021. 
She indicated she she will announce decision then. On the 16th of June, 2021, the president sent letter to all members of the Police Service Commission: Paul Slow, Clinton Conway, Michael Somersall, Vesta Adams, and Clay Jarvis. All of us receive individual letters saying that we are immediately suspended from the Police Service Commission. On the 16th of June, 2021 when the Chief Justice was due to and rendered the decision on the 18th, right? And I asked the question then, why would they issue, why would they issue, why would the President violate the Constitution, issue a suspension on that day, 16th of June, 2021? The decision is to be handed down on the 18th, and the life of the Commission would have ended on the 8th of August, 2021. They had less than two months. And I'm telling you, it's a rhetorical question. The reason why that was done, because they knew that the Chief Justice would have um, thrown out the challenge by Brutus. And once the challenge was thrown out, the Police Service Commission would have gone ahead and released the promotion that was pending since December 2020. So they did not want when that decision was made by the Chief Justice for the Police Service Commission to be in place. So they moved unlawfully and constitutionally to suspend the Police Service Commission. So the matter, we again, Mr. Peters represented us with Mr. Tad and Mr. Smart. They represented us. And a long court battle ensued. Long court battle ensued before Justice Gino Passai. The first thing that happened when he turned up for the, the, the first hearing, it was virtual. The Attorney General challenged the naming of the President as a respondent on the, um, in, in the matter. Uh, we, we, had made, we had named the president as a respondent. And we had long legal arguments over that. Eventually, judge ruled that you cannot name the president as a respondent in a civil proceedings because he, according to the Constitution, is immune. He enjoys immunity. So when that decision was handed down, listen to this carefully, buddy. I, you look, I'm telling you, I'll, I'll get it done pat. When the decision was made, the judge then decided that he was going to set what they call case management, date by which you must submit. The chief, the, the attorney general then informed him that they had filed an application the same day or, or sometime after to, to um, prevent the matter from continuing on the grounds that by that, time, by that time the life of the commission had ended because the life of the commission ended on the 8th of August 2021. So when Justice Passard ruled that the president could not be named, and um, decided to move, pro proceed with the matter. The Attorney General said, we have filed an application for this matter to be thrown out altogether because the police service commission, the life of the police service commission had ended. So arguments started with that now. Uh, along the colleagues, these interlocutory matters. Then the, the, the Justice Zidu Passad rule in that one, he said, notwithstanding the fact that the life of the police service commission ended. The matter was of sufficient public interest to be ordered and determined on its merit. And therefore, what he ordered is that Paul Slow will be substituted in the place and stead of the police service commission. So instead of the matter now being uh, police service commission versus the attorney general et al., it was now Paul Slow versus um, these people, Paul Slow to substitute in the place and stead. The Attorney General challenged that to the full court. He challenged that decision of the judge to the full court. The full court then upheld the decision of the judge. They made one minor adjustment. They say instead of Paul Slow being at, um, substituted in the place instead of the Police Service Commission, Paul Slow must, can be added as an application, as an applicant in his own right. So I was added an applicant to, to the matter. And then the chief, the, I said chief justice, the attorney general then sought leave from the full court to appeal their decision to the appeal court of Guyana. He wanted to take it all the way to the CCJ. And the full court shut him down. The full court did not grant him permission to take the matter any further. They said there was nothing to, to go any further. Let's let the substantive matter be ordered and determined. So the matter went back to Justice Prasad now. And Justice Prasad um, thing. By which time the Police Service Commission, the new Police Service Commission, was sworn in. They they um they retained uh well not East Queen Council. He was Queen Council at the time. He's now King King Council. Mr. Ramdani to represent the Police Service Commission. How were they attempted to do? 
they attempted to say that the police service commission has no interest in the matter any longer and they wanted the matter to be um, discontinued well it was ruled yeah you might discontinue but slow is now an applicant as well and you can't discontinue on behalf of slow and slow is not uh, they made it plain to them i am not discontinuing let the matter be ordered and determine its own merit and that is how you see Mark Phillips, the Prime Minister, now has to submit an affidavit, a lying affidavit. Mark submitted an affidavit, he told a pack of lies. Let me tell you one of the lies that he told. Remember, we had the, I told you about the meeting with the President on the 16th of September. Now, after I was charged in May, I held a press conference, a virtual press conference, and outlined all the issues where the President wanted people promoted and that. On in, I did it, I, I can't remember the exact date, but it was late uh, May. The president issued a press release from the office of the president, where he admitted that the meeting between us took place, but he disputed the content of the meeting. In other words, he said, yeah, we met. And then he said, well, he was new. I just wanted to feel that all these things were. That's what the president admitted in a letter, a press release. I have copies of the press release. Mark Phillips, when this matter with the commission came to fore, swore to an affidavit that this meeting that I said between myself and the president on the 16th of September never took place. Mark Phillips, the prime minister, swore to that. And I asked the question if that is not forgery. He swore to an affidavit saying that this meeting never took place. And the letter from the, or the press release from the president on at least three occasions in that letter admitted that the meeting that I said took place on the 16th of September. So, the matter went all the way now, and then the judge ruled on the 24th of um, on, of 24th of March, just over a year ago. And hear what he said. I'm going to read the whole thing now, because it's a long part of it. But let me read the last part, what the, the um, judge ruled. The judge ruled in his concluding remarks and, depos and disposition. He said, in summary, therefore, the, de the decision of His Excellency the President to suspend the chairman and other members of the Police of His Commission was A, unlawful, B, ultra-virus or Article 212 of the Constitution, C, arbitrary, 4, or D, unreasonable, E, unfair, F, in violation of the suspended chairman and commissioner's constitutional rights to the protection of the law and due process of the law, and, and G, null, void, and of no legal effect. That is what the judge ruled. He went on to say, it is hereby ordered and declared that judgment be and is hereby granted in favor of Paul Slow as prayed for in para one of the fixed date application in the following terms. That this, we, had, we had said that the suspension of the chairman and member of the police service commission, namely chairman Paul Esmond Slow, CCH, DSM, JP, as commissioner, Michael Somersault, CCH, DSM, JP, Mrs. Claire Alexis Jarvis, Mrs. Vesta Adams, and Mr. Clinton Andrew Conway from performing the functions of their respective offices in the commission, which His Excellency, the President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, did order by letter on the 16th of June, 2021, were contrary to, in violation of, and ultra virus, the Constitution of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, and in particular, Article 225.6 and 210.3, and therefore of no force and effect. Then the last thing he says, cost. Parties to address the court on the issue of cost. I'm aware that uh, submissions were made on the issues of cost, and up to now, I ain't hear anything further. I take a lot of this, but in CC, forgive me. I'm going to bring him Mr. Conway now for him to um, have his say on this, this matter. One year, CC. One year since that landmark decision by Justice Gino Prasad. I must add, add that the Attorney General did indicate that he was going to appeal. CC, over to you. Yeah, I remember he said he's going to appeal, but we haven't heard anything further about that. But I love the judges that say, you know, some judges may just say the, the action of the President was unlawful, but he didn't say unlawful. Let me repeat some of the things he said. Unlawful. Also, first Article 225 of the Constitution, arbitrary, unreasonable, in violation of the suspended chairman and commissioner's constitutional rights to the protection of law and due process of the law, null, void, and of no legal effect. And I know they're going to appeal. And I, I would be surprised if they go all the way to the CCJ. 
But we 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 believe in the judge and we believe in the case, you know. And that the president did violate the constitution, you know. And and had so after all hours, you know, Selwyn Peters, Dexter Todd, Dexter Smart, you know, they did an, an, an excellent job and they were man enough. And you too, Paul, you were man enough, you took the, the lead role, man enough to challenge the decision of, of, of the president when some point say we should do that, no, we should left it like that. But they didn't expect a fight. But well, we are fighters and we fought them to the, to the very end. And I know it's going up till at CCJ and there again we'll be vindicated again. Yes, yeah. So um yeah, we, we gotta um update. I see a man who known as YouTuber. He said, let me put up what he's saying. Um, I don't like to be rude to students, but he's saying that he wants a current issue. If you're not satisfied with what's going on, my brother, you could always tune out, you know. You could always tune out. He wants a pass issue. We take it too long, he said a pass. It is important that people be reminded what goes on. Because the vice president and other people come there, he come there on Thursday and want you to forget these issues. The president violated the constitution. And, and, and that has to be, we believe it's important enough to bring it to the attention of our persons. We're not going to let these things slide. And that is the problem we have in Guyana. One of the problems we have is this limited shelf life of issues. An issue comes up and we make a big fuss over it over a couple of weeks or so, and then it dies down. And that is what they capitalize on. That is what they capitalize on. So these issues, I and we are not going to let them um, die down. We're going to remind you from time to time. And apologies, because if you feel that you don't want to hear it, or if you've heard it before, you can always tune out. You can always tune out. This is a voluntary, even though we ask people to come and to support and to hear good, hear the valid information. If you feel this is not the type of information that you want to hear, tune out, my brother, tune out. Tune out. That's, what, that's all I have to say. And I'm not being rude. I'm just being factual. If you feel that this is not what you tune into here this morning, then pack up your bundle and go. Leave your thing and go. So that is just an aside. Now, so as I said, it is important for persons because one of the things too, one of the things too, we get new people joining all the time and we cannot assume that everyone is aware of all the facts. We can't assume. And as teachers, we know when you go to do a lesson, this is our start. Before you start a new lesson, you should recap what transpired before. You do a brief recap and then you move on. This might not have been a brief as you expected, but it is important that we remind people what is going on. And yesterday was a year since that landmark decision by Justice Gino Pissad, and we think it's important enough to um, bring it to your attention and to walk you through. Because we can't tell you about the decision without giving you the whole um, antecedent, what transpired, right? So we walk you through so you could understand how the judge came to give that decision on the 24th of March, 2023, right? And let's continue to share the life, man. Continue to share the life and give me a thumbs up. Give me my thumbs up, right? And give me my thumbs up. And we're going to move to a more current issue now. Current issue. Oh, man, this place always... And we're talking here now of this letter from the, let me give you the little accolades this morning, from the acting commissioner, Mr. Clifton Aiken, who we normally call the extended squatter because he's squatting in the seat. On the 19th of this month, a couple of days ago, he wrote a letter to um, the, a gentleman by the name, the manager, Allah, a fancy name. Let me try to pronounce the name to you all. He said his name is um, Chattari, what? Chattra, Chattra Rees Mohan or something. The man is C Mohan. Let me put that C Mohan. Director. That's a director of what? Chattra Director. Then he says the letter is captioned Recancellation of Supernumerary Status, C Mohan Contracting Guyana Inc. That is the caption of the letter. The letter is dated on the 19th of March, 2024. And it says here, I'm going to read the letter and we're going to analyze it. It says, reference the above subject. He said, dear sir, and this is an address of Mr. Mohan at 239 Kwame Ministry, Street, George Young. You will see the importance of that later on. He said, reference the above subject. Consequent 
to the company's violation of the Private Security Service Act number 32 of 2009, you are hereby notified that in my capacity as a controlling authority under the Private Securities Act, notice is hereby given that your license in relation to your security service registered under the name C1 Contracting Diana Incorporated is canceled with effect from the, 20, from the 19th of March, 2024. That's the same day the letter was written. In accordance with Section 11B of the Private Securities Act Number 32 of 2009, which states that, and he quote, every private security agency shall ensure that the security guards are supervised and supervisors recruited and employed or engaged by them receive training and professional skills as per the curriculum prescribed by regulations. End of quote. As a consequence, according to Section 10.4 of the Act, you are to cease the, to provide security services to your clients with effect from the 19th of March, 2024. Then it goes on to say, one, all firearms and ammunition shall be handed over to the Guyana Police Force. All clients shall be informed of the cancellation. All security personnel shall cease to wear uniform. Upon cancellation, all processing and training of all personnel must cease from the period of cancellation. Upon cancellation, all firearm license shall be revoked. Upon cancellation, the appointment of all security constables shall be revoked. Upon cancellation, the company shall cease to use the emblem, logo, and badge. Yours sincerely, Clifton Ikin, Acting Commissioner of Police. This is copied to Deputy Commissioner Administration, Deputy Commissioner Operations, Deputy Commissioner Law Enforcement, Head of Special Branch, Commanders Regional, Re, Commanders Regions of 3, 4A, 4B, 4C, and that, this is a letter of the cancellation that he sent. Well, let me tell you, you will recall that we spoke about this last, well, we didn't address this letter directly, but we spoke about the issue of cancellation um, last week. And you know, we advise, maybe this letter was sent before, we advise that when you go to cancellation, you can't just arbitrarily and capriciously cancel because the last you have the authority. There's a process to be gone through. There's a process. It's the rule of law. It's natural justice. The, and we said that the first thing you have to do is to ask the person to show cause. One of the first things you have to do, you have to ask the person to show cause why this action should not be taken. And Mr. Conway will read the law to you in a short while. And we said, having done that, then you may proceed. Of course, you would have seized the firearms and all of that. And then you would have proceeded. But here is a letter from the, um, the, 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 the acting commissioner to Mr. Moan. And nowhere in this letter is it stated what offense is alleged. It said that you violated the act. What violation? What did they do wrong? What did they do wrong? That is not stated. No show cause. He's not asked to show cause. And this is not an isolated incident, you know, of this type of arbitrary behavior. I referred earlier in earlier programs to the dismissal of the ranks who were involved in the Quindon Bacchus issue. Damien McLennan, Christophe, the Nabriga, and Simon, Christian Simon, I think is his name. Dismissed. They appeared in court on the, 20, on the second day or the fifth day of July 2022, and they were summarily dismissed. No um, presumption of innocence, no right to be heard, nothing like that, they were dismissed. Then we have three constables in Barbies um, with this incident where an officer lost his firearm and three constables are dismissed arbitrarily. No, op no opportunity, no natural justice, no right to be heard. They just write and say we dismiss. And the man, uh, even though we have said it over and over, the man relying on, uh, on Section 35.1 of the Police Act, Chapter 1. Which basically say you can dismiss, but you can't do it just like that. You have to go through a process, natural justice, natural justice. People have a right to be heard. You can't do it like that. And then after this letter was sent, and we meant we alluded to it last week. After this letter was sent, they, 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 um, we, we said last week that the telephone start telephone started to ring off the hook. Of the oak, so the letter sent on the 19th, at least the letter was written on the 19th, dispatch, I guess, sometime thereafter. Then the next thing you know, on the 22nd 
of March. So this first letter is on the 19th of March, where this um, revocation of the supernumerary status of this company. And on the 22nd, the man of Eat Humble Pie, he writes to the same contracting company, but a different address this time. The first address was in um, um, Communist Street. I think it is, let me make sure. Yeah, Communist Street, lot 239 Communist Street. And now this one is in Ornock Street. No lot is mentioned. Ornock Street. And it says, re-cancellation of supernumerary status, Seymour contracting, Inc., con contracting Guyana Inc. Um, it says here, reference the above subject. I wish to advise that my letter dated March the 19th, 2024, is hereby rescinded. <laughs> It is hereby rescinded. So you write on the twenty, on the nineteenth. You rescind on the twenty-second. Now let me let me examine before bringing Mr. Conway the rescinding because I don't know if he has rescinded this um, early letter because he recognized, as we have said, it wasn't properly done. The man wasn't asked to show cause. The the the, the whatever infraction you're alleging wasn't stated, which is critical. It's important. You got to tell them what what they did wrong. So we had no if this restriction is to correct the first one. But I would have thought that if that were so, by now we would have issued a corrected um, revocation. The fact that that has not been done, I can only assume that, A, the man was told to stand down, back off, back off. That's what the man was told. That's, my, that's what I'm assuming. Let me bring you Mr. Conway to, to talk something about this. Then we're going to come back on it. Mr. Conway, what is your take on this letter written by the acting commissioner to see Mohan, and then a um, couple of days after, the thing is rescinded. To me, it's a political interference in the Guyana police force. Whether it's correct or not, I, I don't know, but it's political. Well, let me, let me put things in proper order. There's a Private Security Service Act 2009 signed by Barra Jack Dio when he was president. I think he signed it all years there. And it spells out, they, they, they regulate the conduct of private security services, how they should operate. And as I know it, the commissioner police has the authority to make up what you call standing orders to enforce any laws that have come into force. You have the Private Security Service Act 2009. And so far, I don't know of any written standing orders to enforce the, 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 the law. I thought by now that would have been done since 2009. And they have persons there who are capable of, of supplying stand, of doing standing orders. But many of them are being sidelined by by the by the leadership of, of, of the of the of the police force. And what they're doing, instead of the police building capacity, they're outsourcing. I wouldn't be surprised to hear that they gone to the University of Guyana to do the standing order for them in relation to this act, or they have gone to the nation's university to to do the standing orders with that. And they run into people who do not have any real policing or law enforcement um, knowledge or, or, or background. But let me come to the act itself, you know. The act is very clear about suspension, and I'm going to read part of it, and cancellation. Here's it. The extended squatter has written this security service provider telling him that he has canceled his license to provide security service. And if you're going to, according to the, the law, if you're going to cancel, there are certain things you have to do. The initial thing is that you should really suspend. You suspend for a period, according to the, I'm going to read the law, a period not exceeding one month. And at the same time, Paul, you mentioned, you give the person the right to be heard. You ask them to show cause. And the law said within 15 days, they must show cause why the suspension should be further suspended and even later canceled. 
And if you're going to suspend force, you, you, you need to seize all the weapons. And all the persons who are operating as security personnel, they have to be suspended. And when you're going to cancel, you have to revoke all the firearms license, revoke all the firearms license, and revoke all the appointment of supernumerary constables. I didn't see that in, 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 in the letter. That wasn't stated in, 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 in the letter. They didn't revoke the appointments of the supernumerary constables, neither they didn't cancel all the firearms, all, all, all the firearms license. The persons have got to get a right to be heard. And if you're going to suspend, the persons can apply, apply to the Minister of Home Affairs. But if you're going to cancel the, 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 the firearm license, the person has got to apply to the President. So the squatter has jumped and he quoted section let me see the section. He quoted section I'm going to it Oh, section 11B. So I jump into the Private Security Service Act, and there's no section 11B. There's no section 11B. There's section 11.1 and 11.2. And two are from A, B, C, and D. And here are B says, every private security service shall ensure that the security guards and supervision supervisors recruited and employed or engaged by them b receive training and professional skills as per curriculum prescribed by regulation so there's nothing in the letter stating what offense or offenses the secret the, 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 the private security person committed and then i want want to know um is 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 is, is the leadership of the police force just autocratic they don't have meetings with the with, with their executive leadership team and matters like this will be discussed nobody there to advise them or person there don't give any advice because there's feel a man squatting there so they want the committee itself so that they can do grooving in in, in in that position so many things went wrong 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 with the letter and the letter the the, the act saying also that persons must be told in simple language and in detail about the offense committed. And let me read part of what the, what the, what the act says. You know. The act says, and I'm reading section 10.2. Where the controlling authority, and the controlling authority is the commission police, for reasons to be, rec to be recorded in writing, is satisfied that Pending the question of cancellation of a license on one or more of the grounds mentioned in subsection one, it is necessary or expedient to do so. The control authority may, by order in writing, suspend the operation of the license for such period not exceeding 30 days as may be specified in the order and require that the license holder to show cause within 15 days from the date of issue of the order as to why the suspension of the license should not be extended until determination of the question of cancellation. About three now. Every order of suspicion of cancellation of a license shall be in writing and shall specify the reasons for such suspension or cancellation as the case may be. And a copy of the order shall be communicated to the person affected. Four. And this talks about when, when you do when you have cancellation. When a cancellation or suspension of service occur, the following shall apply. One, the private security agency shall be ordered by the controlling authority to cease to provide security services. All firearm ammunition, all firearms and ammunition shall be handed over to the Guyana Police Force. Three. All clans shall be informed of the cancellation. Four, all security persons shall cease to wear uniform. Four, upon suspension, all processing and training of all personnel must cease 
for the period of suspension. Five, upon cancellation, all firearms license shall be revoked. Six, upon cancellation, the appointments of all supernumerary constables shall be revoked. And seven, upon cancellation, the company shall cease to use the uniform of the logo or, 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 or badge. So it's very clear what must be done. And also with this, there are so many breaches committed by private security, you know, that, you know, you want to know what really is going on. First, they have to wear the uniform. And not only the, the, the uniform, which is approved by the control, but not only that, apart from the uniform, they're supposed to have an identification card. An identification card has some, some, it has an identity number. You have a photograph of security guard and affixed with a stamp of the security agency. The name, the designation, security guard supervisor, the date of birth, signature of guard, signature of agency, period of validity, validity, date of issue, and seal. So you're wearing the uniform and also you have to get on display the ID card. And here was section 17 said one, a private security agent agency shall issue to every private security guard and every supervisor employed or engaged by it a photo identity card of a distinct identification number special uniform special badges and caps indicating the logo emblem of a private security agency concern as approved by the controlling authority while on duty every private security guard and supervisor shall wear the uniform and badge given to him and shall display it on his person the photo, cup, the photo identity card issued on the subject one, unless otherwise approved by the controlling authority. You see the, sec the security service people, they're working in plain clothes. You, if you want them to work in plain clothes, you have to get the authority of the com commissioner of police. There are so many breaches com committed by, by security service that nothing really is being done. And I agree, I will not brief for the, the security service in, in, in question, but if the commissioner wants to cancel or he wants to suspend, he must follow the law. And the law is clear, let me put it in a nutshell, that you must state the offense in which, or the, the offense in which was committed by the security service or members of security service and suspension is not more than 10 days in the first instance and the person must be given 15 days in the 15 days in the writing in in which to show cause why it should not be the the the, the, the suspension should not be further should, should, should extended and why there should not be a can cancellation and also the all weapons must be seized i didn't see any letter seize any weapon and all security, all, all, and when you cancel, all the, the, the firearm license must be revoked, and all the appointment of security, uh, supernumerary council must be revoked. So the, the, the whole thing is here. I can't even find words to describe what really, really took place there. So one, one day, you write in and you can give cancellation, and a couple of days after, retracting, rescinding any order. Some, something that makes sense some way. It's just, you know, they, they, they're behaving lawless, just like the security service, you know. And and I, I don't know what was, what's going on, Paul. Maybe you might know better. Yeah, well, you, you underestimate the phone call, huh? You the phone call. Huh? You, the phone call. you sit down there and believe that the law allows you or the law permits you to do certain things. And then you get a phone call. I say, back off. Back off. And then two words, back off. And then you got to jump up and you res, um, rescind. Imagine that. Imagine that. You said, but as I've said before, there was every reason to rescind because the original letter is greatly flawed. It doesn't, it doesn't comply with the relevant laws. So it doesn't say, it doesn't outline what is the infraction or infractions this company committed. One, it doesn't ask them to show cause why um to, to so cause why they should not be suspended or revoked you have to do that natural justice so maybe yeah you can rescind based on that what i've just said but 
One would have thought immediately after you receive that letter dated the 19th of March, you're going to do the right letter now. Make sure you ask to show cause and all of that. But the fact that that was not done signals to me that you say, hey, this matter done. And let me tell you this. Not only this company, because I don't think this is the company involved in the um, where the man with the AR rifle go and get the gun from another guy and shoot and kill this young lady on the East Coast and then went and get another gun from another guy, AR-15, I'm telling you, and shot himself. You didn't hear anything further on that. There's not that company. They're a different company. But I'm aware that this company, this CMC company, has committed numerous violations. My information, this is the same company that had given a firearm to some 19-year-old guy at Border Market when he accidentally discharged the firearm, injured himself and some youth man who was nearby. Is it, is it, is it, it is the same company, I understand, that on the East Bank somewhere there, one of the guys playing Russian roulette with the firearm injured some um, worker. And many other infractions, including giving firearms to persons who are not supernumerary constable and therefore not legally authorized to carry firearms. In terms of the training, it's not only for that security company. All the security companies, or most of the security companies, are not properly trained. Following that shooting that occurred last week, two days after, we got word that a security guard, uh, Andy Mon, shot and killed at Lusignan in some um, auto sales business there. And what is the story? The man, somehow I understand, the man had no training, this man who was issued this fire had no training in the use of firearm and somehow the firearm went off, shot this youngster um, in his grind or somewhere in his leg it looked, and, he, and killed him. And, and let me say this, I, I regret to say it, but the fact that you have so many people running around in the security companies and elsewhere with firearm, including automatic or semi-automatic rifles, no training, more incidents like this you're going to have you're going to have more incidents like this, unfortunate and regrettably, because if you're going to give these people firearms, they don't have any training. Some people make an issue about the age, 1920. I don't make an issue about the age because when I joined the police force, I was just 18 plus, like many others. We went through training and we were made to work with firearms because we were properly trained. So age in itself should not be the issue. Age in itself should not be the issue. I have gone to shoot um, in England and elsewhere, and you have teenagers shooting cadets, uh, shooting, nothing wrong with people shooting at a young age, but the important thing that they have to be adequately trained. And I have been saying, I've been saying over and over, one of the biggest problems with the issuing of firearms in Guyana, and what our firearms issue to security companies, police ranks, civilians, even the military, that don't have the adequate training to carry around the firearms. For me, a trained man, it is a frightening thing to see you drive around town or you walk around Georgetown and its environs to see security guards at supermarket with, with semi-automatic rifles, to see security guards with shotgun, because I know that if the shotgun goes off, it's not only, even if they try to shoot at one person, the corner fire will ensure that other innocent people are injured. I spoke about a man at the GRA in Camp Street, shotgun the security areas. I spoke about a people, um, a security at NIS building with a semi with, with, with a, with a um, semi automatic pistol, not pistol, sorry, a, a submachine gun. And we're saying something is wrong. Something is wrong. And these issues have to be addressed. And this is where. The, the licensing authority, the commissioner, the minister of home affairs, the national security advisor, and the old government, they must recognize that this is a serious, serious issue. Because can you imagine? Let me let me let me put it. They talk about tourism and all of that. And they're pushing for tourism and all of that. Can you imagine a, a tourist coming to this country, a European tourist, an American tourist, and because of some accident, as we call it, they are shot and injured or killed. Can you imagine what is going to be the, the uproar that that is going to be caused? Where you have persons issued with firearm and, and, and I say again, when these incidents such as the one 
where the guard got the AR-15 rifle and killed that young lady. And the one where the guard at the auto says, as the next man, shot and killed the teenager. The company, the company, the security company is also liable vicariously. The security company is liable. And I advise the relatives of those forces to get a lawyer and to be advised as to what action can be taken because if they give the firearm to an untrained person and that untrained person end up injuring or killing someone, then they are responsible. They can't absolve themselves from any blame. They are responsible. So let's see where they will go with all of these issues. And you know, they have the, um, the, the private security umbrella organization, GAPSO. I don't know what they are doing because they now as a private, as an umbrella body, have a responsibility to come out and to say something and to make sure that their members are compliant. I don't know with the mushrooming of private security companies. I don't know if all of them now are under this umbrella because I think it's something that you have to join. So I don't know, but it is time. The time has long passed for the authorities. When I talk about the authorities, I'm talking about the government. Minister of Affairs, National Security Advisor, the man who sits in the commissioner's chair, for them to come up and to deal with this and in, 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 in a legal manner. Not in the manner that the, the man attempted to deal with it um, the other day, which caused him to rescind that letter. Deal with it according to the law. Deal with it according to the law. Let me bring in Mr. Conway to have his last say on this, and then we're going to move on. CC? Yeah, Paul. You know, the, the, the thing is critical to this thing here is training. What, what they're doing is that they, maybe they catch people, put in a couple of in, in, in the classroom. Uh, talk to them about uh, chalk and talk about, about him, the mechanisms and they carry them on the seawall and they shoot a couple of rounds and then they're competent to use firearms. They, I, I remember the I remember the, the extended squad is saying that the training would be three weeks. Maybe I, 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 I agree with him because some things they got to be told so then they got to know things like anger management self-esteem conflict resolution they're resolving conflict through the barrel of a gun and i've seen many license being issued and on the license they stated that the chief security officer or the security manager must be a retired senior joint services officer a retired senior joint services officer i know the police force the senior officers from the rank of superintendents you got persons who are chief security officer left the force as as corporals as sergeants as as inspectors you know they, they, they're, not, they're not following this thing this thing needs to be seriously addressed and god forbid more persons will die more persons will get injuries that they need to seriously enforce this 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 private security services act and when the security service do nonsense take the corrective action take the action as laid on by law if you have to suspend you have to suspend if you have to cancel you have to cancel but follow the procedure including the the right to be heard the right to be heard this thing is going on far too long far too long we getting security service doing their, their own own thing and nothing is being done and they continue to operate man and we see again it seems to be the, the the new the newer breed of security companies because we have the ones who the older more established ones i don't think we have or we get the type of complaints uh from these people we don't get the type of complaints right i, I don't hear about complaints from these people what is new security company you don't know what it what what are the requirements for someone to establish a security company? I, I don't know what they have to do. They just decide they come um, and they get fired. They get, imagine they're getting AR style rifles, AR, right? Which is a semi automatic, uh, lethal barrel rifle. They're giving them this, and then they're putting those firearms into the hands of persons who are with no training, with no training. So, it's a, it's, a, it's a very volatile situation, and unless it is addressed, 
and address quickly, I can't see it being resolved. And the fact that um, the acting commissioner, the, the extended squatter, had Pai thrown in his face uh, recently, I suspect he might be reluctant to do anything for them. He are going, he's going to be afraid, you know. Some years, a couple, just over a year ago, they had a press conference to debunk Bas, uh, Bascom, and then when the backfire, no more press conference, none since then to now. So I rather suspect that now that you have had this pie in your face over this revocation or the cancellation of this license, that is it, no more cancellation, no more cancellation, which is a very worrying thing, which is very worrying in light of all the violations by these um, security companies, uh, that it's, it's frightening. It is frightening indeed. Let me move on. Um, we have already, oh Lord, I want 45 minutes already. Let me say this as we, um, somebody asking if we still um, demonstrate in front of the uh, Venezuelan embassy. No, since the Argyle Declaration, we stop. Since Argyle, we stop. And now that we're talking about that, I got a question. We're going to deal with it today. We don't have time for that today. Can we note it, or I note it, that Venezuela has gone ahead and uh, passed the law which makes Esequibo a state of Venezuela. Esequibo is now a state of Venezuela. And therefore, the question that I want to ask, before I bring in Mr. Conway to ask, to answer perhaps, and to, to, to say what he has to say on this issue, what was the purpose of this Argyle meeting with the president of Guyana and the president of Venezuela? What did Guyana achieve from that? Because Venezuela has gone ahead with all what they want, all, all what they said they would have done before. I think the only thing that they have not done is to chase the um, Exxon Mobile and these people out of the area. I don't think they have done that. But in terms of the annexation, and they, they've gone ahead with everything else. So I don't know what um, was the purpose of this Argyle. I remember Argyle was the meeting um, in the, at the airport in St. Vincent arranged by Ralph Gonzalez and others. Ralph Gonzalez is the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenny. What did Guyana achieve from that meeting if Venezuela has gone ahead and create and made a law which makes Esquibo a state of uh, Venezuela? Mr. Conway, can you explain that to our students? What did Guyana achieve from I, this meeting? I said on this very program that the president should not have gone to Argyle, the airport, and had discussions with the Venezuelan President Maduro. Because Maduro had a 17-point plan, and he didn't change a word. He didn't change a sentence. He didn't backtrack on nothing. He didn't, he didn't rescind anything like how the, the extended squad had rescinded his, his letter. And the president went there and have this caution with him. And true to form, he hasn't written anything now. He got on and he passed the law. He said he's gonna annex Esquibo. He he gonna make all of them Venezuelan citizens. He had, he had given given the, the, the companies operating Esquibos, I think six months, I think six months must be passed in which to, to apply to Venezuela to do their work. You know. The Maduro has not changed. The leopard has not changed. And we're going to be talking to the leopard, man. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Paul, more thing is going to happen. There is a, I agree there's a calm, but there's an uneasy calm, a very uneasy calm. It's an ominous calm. It's an ominous calm. I agree with you, my brother. Ominous calm. But let's, let's wait to see uh, what will happen. And, you know, again... I think the government of Ghana issued some statement condemning the action of Venezuela. Well, is that enough? I don't know. I don't know. No. And then the next question, what has happened to the, um, the, the the matter before the ICJ, the International Court of Justice? I don't know. These things, they ought to be keeping the Guyanese public updated. They are not doing so. They're not doing so. They're not doing so. And uh, we talk about the security company and the lawlessness there. I see too the um, a couple nights ago, uh, another execution um, in, in, in Sophia this time, so another execution style murder called Thursday night in Defield Sophia. The story is 
Uh, some fellow rode up on a bicycle and shot and killed a 56-year-old man by name of Courtney Young and execution. And you have all these crimes. And remember, just a few weeks ago, um, the police officers' conference, the acting commissioner, the extended squatter, telling the Guyanese public and the world in the presence of the president that one of the major issues affecting the force is cybercrime and social, social media influencers. Can you imagine that? He is more concerned with cybercrime and social media influencers when he gets security companies running amok with AR rifle people taking them away and killing people, man firing off shotgun and killing a uh, worker, execution style killing, road deaths. You've had so many road deaths we haven't been talking about in recent times, but over the past couple of days, road deaths and the, 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 the extended squatter can tell people that the focus of the organization is on cybercrime and social media influencers. If you had a real government, you would have been sent back in immediately. If you had people who were competent running the show, you would have been asked, first of all, if you had competent people, you would not have been there. But given that he's there, he would have been asked to resign and go, well, you know, he doesn't have to resign because he's past retirement age. But that is what you have. That is what you have. You have another issue too, I saw in the papers, two uh, policemen, a sergeant and a corporal or a constable charged for uh, pretending to be Soku ranks. They're pretending to be Soku ranks, get some man, demand some million dollars from him. The man is said to have given them 100,000 and they parted the money, they end up charging for the court. You have so many issues. Only this morning, somebody is telling me that people are so dissatisfied. The force is so demoralized. It's a lot of sick leave and resignation. And I could understand it. It's a lot of sick leave and, and, and um, resignations. People are not going to stay around with that. People are not going to stay. And I make the point, and I'm saying it again before I bring in Mr. Conway for his closing remarks, is that it reflects on the leadership of the organization, the senior leadership of the organization. You got the, the, the um, well, somebody told me too, is that only one revocation? You have the rescinding of the um, of the license, of the letter to the security company. You also had the rescinding of the Sandpit um, arrangement. Remember, the, the, the news broke that the man who sits in the commissioner chair, uh, uh, Mr. Clifton Ekin, and the man who sits there, administration, uh, Calvin Butas, they applied for a concession to mine sign up, sand along the highway. And the vice president a few weeks say that dying happen. The vice president shut it down. So all of these are issues, you know. Men concerned with that type of thing, running business, and they're concerned with the force. And Starbrook News are a beautiful editorial net, but you can't be in those positions. I held the position of a commander, several police divisions as the operations end in the force, I had those positions. And I know you can't um, be in those positions and be effective, and then you get us upon the side. You get us, it can't work. It cannot work, but them chaps don't care. And I said before, perhaps the police is the side hustle, and the main hustle is what I get in. You got a senior police officer, and I'm gonna talk about this on Wednesday again, uh, um, in answer to the vice president's claim about evidence and all of that. Remember, you tell them the, the UNHCR came out with the um, question in there last week. You talk about evidence and all that. You got, uh, and I made the point. When allegations are made, the authorities have a responsibility to investigate and to find the evidence. They have to investigate and find the evidence. You can't ask me to bring evidence in. So the allegation is that a city police officer attempted to launder $16.5 million through the police credit union. The father says that when the people there follow the law and say this can happen, they were removed. They were transferred from that department. And I am not aware of any investigation being done. That is a serious, serious allegation. Serious money laundering by a senior member of the Ghana Police Force. 16.5 million Ghana dollars. I never owned 16.5 million dollars in my whole life. At least that belonged to me. When I pay salary and think maybe you had them type of money. People money them on, but this man is um, is um, depositing 
$16.5 million. The thing came out. Take that social media. And what? No investigation. None. Similar to the Sue allegation, no investigation. CC, your closing remarks, my brother. Yeah, um, you know, and this thing about cybercrime, you know, and when you look at it, the police, they have 11 categories of crime that they consider serious crime. And cybercrime is not one of them. And then when you're going back to the police officers conference, they had a conference. And one of the respect as traditional in our time, Paul, we have to get conference statement. A statement coming out of conference saying what the, what is the things that they discuss on things goes and what is the way forward for the Ghana police force. And nothing at all. Not 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 not, not nothing in, in coming out, you know. And we had a couple, I think since June month last last year, charged with a criminal offense at Wim Police Station has not been interdicted. The understand the letter was over a week now is at New Amsterdam Divisional Police Headquarters waiting to be served on this guy. Understand somebody said that he boasting that he get he, he, he got secret for the squatter and nobody can solve it with anything. And then again, I, I want to believe that the commander there, maybe they're waiting and hoping that that interdiction letter will be rescinded, will be rescinded. So let me close out there. But yeah, my brother, thank you much, thank you much. Now let me show you all this thing. And then I'm going to read a short remark and then we're going to close until Wednesday. That's me like. They recently they had an um, examination, the prison service had an examination for new recruit. And look, 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 who was at the examination? Look. This is the um, candidates taking the exam. <laughs> and I want to know this picture is a picture of the Oval Face Minister Robeson at the exam center. So I want to know if he's applying to become a prison officer too. We have to look out for all you know, the man decided to take our advice and he must he come to the realization this will face minister work is too much for him. So here he is, um, perhaps taking the examination to join the um prison service. So you join um the prison service. Let me see what is going to happen. So I thought I showed it to the student. And in closing, let me read what um GSK Lal. I love GK GSK Lal's. Uh, writing. He wrote, I think it was yesterday, and a, a, a little part I thought I'd quote to you. He said, what, Guyana live, what Guyanese live with today is not a government, but a gang of gangsters. He said, for the most part, what Guyanese have for leaders today are nothing but a control of, a, out of, a, but out of control lunatics, pathological liars, unreconstructed racists, and political status. He said the UNHCR, that's the United Nations Human Rights Commission, exposed all this and more in one fell swoop. Unless stopped, the PPP government will drown Guyana with drown Guyana with it as its long descent begins. That is what GHK Lal said. He said, We don't have a government, we have we have a gang of gangsters. That is what GSK Lal is saying. And he said, for the most part, what Guyanese have as leaders today are nothing but out of, out of control lunatics, pathological liars, unreconstructed racists, and political sadists. That is what GSK Lal said. That is what I want to leave with you today. I'm going to read this, and I love the assessment. So I'm going to keep it there and bring it to your attention from time to time. Um, I, I'm not satisfied with the amount of thumbs up again, but I'm going to take that for today. I'm going to take that for this holiday just to say to you, continue to enjoy your holiday, back with day today. I know all of the water chewing and the powder and the beer and so on. I know. And let me say to you, if, if somebody's not into the plane of Pagwa, no, please don't wet them. Please don't put a beer on them if they're not into it. Because I recall years ago, people had murder over that. You had murder. A man was killed. Somebody threw 
up here on him. And um, he was killed. So if people are not into it, please, please, please play among your group. Uh, that's it. So continue to enjoy the day. And um, today is Monday, the 25th, God's willing. We're going to see you here again on Wednesday, the 27th day of March, 2024, for another episode of Speaking Out, Exposing Corruption and Incompetence. Um, until then, stay well. Bye.